You are now tuned in to the Addicted to Success.com podcast, where geniuses, entrepreneurs, and next level game changers share their juicy little secrets on achieving massive success. This is the advice you wish you heard years ago. Be prepared and take note as we expose the realness and the raw of what it takes to be successful on Addicted to Success.com. Now, before we get into this episode, we have a special announcement from one of our sponsors. Design Crowd is an online marketplace that helps businesses outsource their graphics, their logos, and their web design with access to over 600,000 designers around the world. Now, within a few hours of submitting your design requirements, you receive 60 to 100 plus designs, so you have the best chance to pick the perfect design for you. Now, I personally love this option and I've used it in my business ventures and projects over the years because it saves me on a few major things in life. Now, it saves you on time. It saves you on the headache of going back and forth with designers and it's also affordable and scalable without you needing your own in-house design team. Now, the good folks at Design Crowd are kind enough to offer you as an exclusive Addicted to Success listener, the VIP Custom Design Upgrade Pack, which will save you over $100 on a deluxe project for any type of custom design, including logos, uh, business cards, websites, flyers, emails, and many, many more things, okay? So head over to designcrowd.com slash success. That's D-E-S-I-G-N-C-R-O-W-D dot com slash success. And the promo code just for the Addicted to Success listeners is success, S-U-C-C-E-S-S, right? Now let's get into this interview. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Addicted to Success podcast. I'm your host, Joel Brown, and today I am with Jordan Taylor Wright, who is the founder of Taylor Cuff Films and is an incredible, creative, and innovative digital video content connoisseur who has worked with people such as Justin Bieber, J-Lo, The Chainsmokers, Martin Garrix, and even Usher to create incredible digital narratives. And, you know, I I checked out Jordan's Instagram account just recently. It's actually at Taylor Cut Films. So make sure you check that out. And uh, you will be absolutely blown away by his pieces. Uh, Jordan, I am so excited to have you on here today. We're going to talk content creation, vision. We're going to talk about how to tap into flow and really how to turn your dreams into a reality. So, Jordan, welcome to the Addicted to Success podcast. Thank you for having me and thank you for that amazing intro. You have, you have a way with words. That was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> you got a way with uh, creating content. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Yeah. So, guys, if you're listening right now, I'm serious. Go and check out Jordan's Instagram account. You'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, the The pictures in this, the visuals are just so creative. The videos that Jordan pieces together, he just has a, a, a knack to really put this together. And I'm sure, Jordan, this isn't just like an overnight thing. I'd love for you to share with us, where did you first find your inspiration to jump in and really commit to content creation? I guess it started at a young age. I mean, I was probably influenced watching um, Disney films and just any type of visuals growing up. And I just remember getting that sense of nostalgia. And then I know before we started this, we were discussing and even you know, Disney films uh, making you feel empathetic and resonating with different like creatures and mother nature and animals. And I feel like at a young age that kind of imprinted onto my brain of how you can tell such a deep story through visuals that kind of stick with you forever. And, um, you know, I'm plant based today. And I feel like a lot of that even inspired me to who I am as, as an individual based on just, you know, whether or if it's more modern watching like Finding Nemo and like fish your friends, not food. It's like that imprints and stays with you forever. And I, that really resonated with me. And then in high school, I took a video production class my freshman year. And I, I, I from that day on, I, I knew I was hooked as soon as I knew I had the ability to kind of create what I thought was movies. You know, when I was in high school, I knew my, my life would never be the same. So I kind of just always wanted to tell a story and I feel like every individual um, on this planet has a story that they like to tell and it's just about finding that means of self-expression whether it's dancing or singing or writing or whatever it may be teaching and I luckily knew um, that telling stories whether it's through photos or or visuals was uh, 
my my means and my path of doing so. And then I studied film in, in college and school and university, and that's what I focus my education on. And I also majored in psychology just because I wanted to understand how the human psyche and how the human brain worked. And um, in terms of social media, I think it really picked up about two years ago or so. Um, I, I was fortunate enough to link with um, Usher about four years ago. Now, um, I was out, outside of school. I had graduated. I was working for the Food Network and I was making videos. And then that wasn't satisfying me creatively. So on the weekends, I would actually... Um, sneak into concert venues in New York City and look at um, what artists that I really enjoyed and would just make friends with the the bouncers, the security guards, and would go and film the show. And I'd go up to the managers of the artists at the end and say, hey, I, I filmed the video. I'm going to make a, a, a cool recap um, kind of of my expression of what I thought the concert was like. And um, you're welcome to use it. You don't have to pay me. But if you decide to um, use it, just say Taylor Cut Films made it. And that kind of started to circulate my name around. And I it caught the attention of a, uh, a manager who was uh, managing an artist named Chris Cab, who was signed to Pharrell at the time, and I ended up going on tour with him. And then from there, it caught the attention of um, a producer in LA who knew um, Usher, and he wanted someone to come film him in New York for a couple days. I filmed him, and as soon as that was done, um, we just hit it off. We, uh, when you just vibe with someone, and uh, uh, just personality-wise, we we really got along. And I obviously am a huge fan of his music and appreciate his ability to tell stories through his music. And he um, saw the same in me with visuals. And that led to almost a three year endeavor of touring together. And then um, I kind of just continued on from there. It's uh, uh, even to this day, if I, I mean, I don't obviously do it for the money, but every day I, it's my soul, it's my motivation to wake up and just create visuals of what is happening within this um, mind of mine. And then uh, to churn it out. And I'm, I'm absolutely blessed and fortunate and happy um, that, people resonated with it as well and social media being the blessing that it is for you know people for us to be on skype call together in australia and la being able to communicate and for people all around the world to be able to see it and hit that like button and feel like you're connected so that was my driving force wow 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 that is amazing uh i, I mean there's so much there that we can draw from i, I just love that uh that you broke it down in such a great way where we have a good understanding of it's not just the talent that you have and the time that you've committed. You also went out and hustled. Like you had to sell yourself and sell your services to, to really, you know, get, get your name out there. So I love that. I think that that's a part that a lot of uh, people that want to be, let's say they're aspiring entrepreneurs, they miss that point. They miss it. They have to, you can create all the content you want, but you have to find a way to market it or sell it too. So it's awesome that you sold your services there. You started from the bottom and just, you know, did it for free. So that's, that's such a great, uh, great story there, man. I really appreciate you sharing yeah, that. Of course. I, I feel like the motivating factor always has to be the the love and the passion for it. Cause I, I, I feel like, especially in today's day and age, you'll, there's a lot of, um, younger, younger people looking up to, um, social media influencers and, I don't, um, it's important to know why you're resonating with them or what your message is or what you're trying to tell. Because if you're watching a video and it's titled, I can't believe I crashed this $5 million Lamborghini or whatever it is, <laughs> it's, it's like, what, what's the, you know, what's the message behind that? And, um, uh, unfortunately there's a lot of, um, not the greatest substance that people are consuming that are, that's, um, meant for the, the soul and for the mind and for expanding, um, who you are as an individual and allowing you to grow. So I think if you, everyone has a story to tell, you know, and everyone has this means of, of self-expression. So it's about finding what resonates best with you. And if it is, you know, writing or if it is singing or it's, it's amazing now with social media that you can be your own marketing service, that you can be your own um, brand, if you will, but um, allow yourself to know intention as to why you're doing it first and foremost don't do it for the, the money don't do it for the likes or degree because ultimately that you're not going to live a quote-unquote successful life because to me the definition of success is happiness and you know this year i'm i'm wrote a, a film that uh took me about two months to write that has a lot to do with like my thought process and, and my story and my understanding of kind of beingness and what it means to be but um yeah, i'm fortunate and blessed to you know have travel with some of the most quote unquote successful artists um, uh, it, within their respective field and then learn that 
being on the road with them, they have millions of dollars, but they are no less happy than um, someone who's sitting at home, um, you know, looking at the sunset from their window. So I guess it's all about knowing that you, you can bring happiness wherever you are and also what makes you happy. I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly fortunate that um, and feel incredibly uh, uh, gracious that I'm able to be, you know, here in L.A., uh, and in a beautiful apartment and, you know, have followers and have accrued money, but that was never the intention. And to me, that's just like, if you're playing Mario and you, you know, all of a sudden you're just getting all these gold coins, like, Ooh, it's like the universe rewarding you for, um, operating out of a place of love. And it's like, I'm sure you love asking people questions and getting to know their life and, and their understanding and trying to get that message spread. And I feel like if, as long as the intention is pure and you understand your intention, then everything else will, will kind of follow into place. And all I really knew, Eddie, cause there is no set path. All I really knew at, at, when I was younger was that I loved making videos and, um, you know, sitting at a desk working for the food network was awesome and it was paying me, but it, I wasn't able to put my soul into it. And I just knew that I had to do something or I didn't have to, but I really wanted to, to put my soul into something cause I wouldn't, feel fulfilled and that ultimately that's what um hopefully everyone wants to do in this life is to live a life that they're fully happy so allow yourself to be fully happy by doing the things that make you happy regardless of what the so-called outcome may be of it and then uh, everything else success will come from that yes uh, you took my mind back there on that uh mario line that you just shared <laughs> collecting <laughs> the coins like mario L- let's yeah. talk about let's talk about the mind because i think it's really important I uh, yeah mindset over everything right circumstances shouldn't limit you it should really be that like what are you going to do about it what are your thoughts and 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 then the actions follow the thoughts but really you studied uh psychology right yeah. so what do you feel uh you have applied to your content creation that has helped you create content in a way where it's compelling uh for human beings yeah i guess um it kind of all starts, I mean, at, in society at a young age, we're imprinted these kind of like programs and um, ways of being that we may not even um, be aware of at a, at a conscious level. Um, you know, we even like the notion of time, like time is a human made thing. Um, time is nonlinear. That all we have is now, you know, the past is a story that we recall and tell ourselves and the future is a projection of what we wish to happen but ultimately all that truly exists is right now so knowing that what you're thinking at the present moment whatever you're um whatever's going on in within your inside world is what's being projected to your outside world and what you're actively manifesting so allowing yourself to um be in the present moment always will then result in the greatest outcome within what's happening and what you want to happen. So, um, you know, I studied psychology. So getting to the root or the derivative of why you're feeling a certain thing, why you're, so we aren't our emotions. If all of a sudden we're feeling sadness, we aren't sadness. Our thoughts that we had 30 minutes ago are not the same thoughts we're going to have 45 minutes from now. So knowing that it comes in waves and the ability to isolate yourself. And that's why I try to live in a state and of consistent meditation and that's just allowing yourself to just be just being and so if a thought arises or if an emotion arises you can witness that thought and be like this is sadness and then understand why you're feeling sadness and is it even coming from you or is it something that you're concerned about within another individual or circumstance that you can't control because ultimately the only thing you can't control is yourself so as long as you are happy all we could possibly be is a mirror reflection of happiness and a beacon of light for other people to see and we can bring that happiness with us everywhere and that's allowed me to really be the best conduit for creativity possible because i am no longer um tied down or burdened, if you will, by stresses or emotions that aren't affiliated with me. So that's where psychology has really come into play. And then um, just being able to be exactly that, a conduit for creating these messages and art, because um, honestly, when I'm creating, it's not me doing it. A dancer isn't thinking about dancing when they're doing the numbers, because all of a sudden, if they're thinking of what the next dance step is, they're missing what's happening in the present moment. So you, it's just the state of flow. So that's the same thing. I just allow myself to always be in a state of happiness and, and, and thankfulness because there's always something to be thankful for. You know, we're breathing right now. We're on this planet. There's beautiful blue sky above us or there's rain or that's we're, which is made of water, which is what we are consisted of. We are 70 percent water. So allowing yourself to be in, interconnected with everything and just be kind of 
blissfully happy about your state of being. And then, uh, then everything's creative because then when you look at everything, you're looking at it through a lens of um, happiness. And then that's where creativity comes from. As a society, we've we've had the most comfortability that we've ever had, but we've also we have the most alienation and the most stress and anxiety and loneliness and depression that we've ever had because we don't understand why we don't feel happy with all of these these things. It's because we got to strip it back to the basics. Be happy yeah. within your present moment. Be happy within yourself, and then everything else will then just be again like Mario just added little coins and tokens that you get to <laughs> really enjoy and be like, this is a dream. This is awesome. Yes, 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 yes. I love this. Jordan, skills are very important when it comes Mm -hmm. to success, acquiring skills or even hiring skills, right? Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what skills do you believe you've acquired that have helped you in creating great content? And then what skills would you hire? Because if there's anyone that's listening that wants to create compelling content, they'd have to know what skills they have to, uh, I guess, get into the classroom on and really start uh, acquiring before they can get to that high level of content creation. So what skills have you acquired? Um, I mean, I feel like I'm always learning. I think the beautiful thing is I, I obviously I went to school for it. So I was able to, um, acquire the, the general knowledge of how the software worked. And then also what, what, what framing kind of meant, um, you know, if it's a low angle that's empowering the character on screen versus if it's a high angle, it, it's, it's showing that they have a loss of power. And then, you know, what close-ups mean versus what wide shots mean. But then ultimately just knowing what feels right. And then um, recently, I, since I've launched my production company a few months ago, I work with an amazing um, number of people on my team. And it's just knowing um, what the overall message is and then how you can collectively do it together. So even if I do know the skills of how to do, you know, um, after effects and rotoscoping or whatever the specific skill set may be, it's also then knowing what other people are amazing at doing that and whether they like doing it and whether they resonate with the story that you're trying to tell. And then all of a sudden it becomes seamless and it becomes like another reference, like in Power Rangers, when all of a sudden you become megas or whatever it is, where all of a sudden you're a bunch of little pieces fitting together into a giant unit, working in harmony, creating something. And ultimately that's more powerful than any one individual can, can do alone. So, um, luckily I've, I've, I have the vision in in my mind of what the ultimate story is going to look like and what the, what the ultimate product is, is going to look like. And, and, then working with amazing individuals that can help put it together. I have um, a music comp- composer that I actually work with in Australia. So while I'm putting the visuals together, when before I go to bed, send him the visuals and he'll start composing the, the music t- uh, tailor made for it. And then uh, when I wake up in the morning, it's there and being able to like have notes and feedback and be able to communicate and just create that in harmony and then have a VFX team in Brazil that um, I can send voice notes to being like, wouldn't it be amazing if all of a sudden, you know, you go to lay in a bed and then the bed turns into water and then you're floating down a river and then he's like, yeah, that's awesome. I love that. And then he starts to put that all together. And then it's just about finding, you know, it's like anything in life. How do you know what, what kind of feels good? You got to trust your, trust your heart and trust, um, trust what, what honestly like feels good, what feels like love to you. And then just surround yourself with those type of people. And then, I mean, if it's, I think your question more specifically about for individuals, like where to, where to get started. It's like, what do you want to get started in? Do you, do you think that you could tell your story the best in taking a photo? Then I guess the first place to start is how does a camera work? You know, does it, you, why, why when I took this picture is, are the, the, the highlights or the sun really, really bright when I wanted to still be able to see what the sky looked like. It's like, oh, okay, well, maybe I need to, maybe that's the exposure, or maybe that's the shutter, or maybe that, whatever it may be. But I think um, I never went into this um, thinking I was going to become a master at it. It's just practice. It's just every day you just kind of tweak and be like, why doesn't this feel the way I'm picturing it to be? And then just le- like learning to tweak it and learning not to get frustrated and learning that no one's perfect that you know that you everyone is perfect and everyone's unperfect at the same we're perfectly imperfect you know that's the beautiful thing about it so allowing yourself to um learn and grow and shift and then all of a sudden you'll look backwards and realize that you have grown exponentially and that you it's all come from a place of just general interest and love in the subject because then that's the only way you really retain it anyway imperfectly perfect 
I love that. <laughs> That's a really good one. Thank you, Jordan. So, yeah. Jordan, your commitment has led you to working with people such as Target, Sony, Bose, American Express, uh, NFL. You've got a, a campaign coming up with Tiffany & Co., Ferragamo, and Audi. These are incredible brands and huge names. Yeah. So, with all of the campaigns that you've done so far, which campaign do you believe resonated the most with people and what do you believe it was about that campaign that helped it to really stand out recently i i did um a, a campaign with bose for their 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 qc35 headphones that was really um i mean everything that i work on is easy but it really resonated with me because one i i only align myself with products that i use in my everyday life anyway because i, I couldn't i i not that I couldn't, but I wouldn't want to create something that wasn't authentic to me because at that point, then I can't put my soul into it because I don't feel it. So I've always used Bose headphones. Um, I, I just love I just love the products. I use it when I'm editing. I use it when I'm listening to music. So it was just really organic. And we made a, uh, a video where I was in a train station and I put on the headphones because um, there was like the chaos of the city and whatnot going on. And as soon as I put it on, I, everything went silent. And I was in this kind of like majestic place. And all of a sudden, the, the train station uh, kind of vanished away. And I was in the middle of nature and then went on this like explorative journey through these different places. And that to me was just kind of the story of what does it actually feel like when you put on headphones, you listen to music? Why, why are you doing it? Um, and for me, it's like I always... I was the kid in the back seat of the car when music was playing. I look out the window and pr pretend it was a movie and pretend that I was directing what was happening, envisioning, you know, like different creatures flying across uh, the, all, all the trees and, and everything and just uh, making a little music video in your mind, which I'm sure most people do as well when they when they hear music. So it's just um, taking that and not being afraid to just make that the vision. And luckily, Bose was really receptive to the idea and they loved the imagination behind it. And what made me feel really happy about it too is after we released it, um, I started to get these direct messages and tags on my different social medias of people literally recreating the video of them putting on headphones in different places and then magical things happening. And that to me was the, that warmed my heart more than uh, any, any amount of likes could have to see that, you know, that other people as well being like, Hey, I, own headphones regardless of what it is and hey i listen to music and hey i dream now this is how it makes me feel to do it so something like that is incredibly powerful motivating and that's that's honestly the reason why i do it as well is just to be able to relate and resonate with people over the world you know getting videos from india of people putting on headphones and then you know just allowing themselves to go on this kind of magical journey of what they how they see the world that's what it's all about so that way um, people don't feel like they they have to be stressed um, on a day-to-day -day basis because it's not true we all have these beautiful visions inside of our mind and um, allow that to be your reality if you choose that to be your reality it, it will be your reality so that that was really special I love that you say if, if that's the reality you want you need to choose that uh, there's a new movie that just came out called Think and Grow Rich. You know, like the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. You should mm -hmm. check that movie out because <laughs> it's all yeah. about what you're talking about, turning your dreams into reality. I think you'd really love it. Uh, Jordan, what is your favorite uh, go-to equipment and software? It, I, I, I've, I've ranged all over the spectrum. I mean, I... I've, I've owned a Sony a7s. My first camera was a Canon 7D. I have a Canon 1DX now. I'm shooting my film on an Ari Alexa. So I guess it depends on what it looks like. But um, And then I edit in the Adobe Suites, Adobe Premiere, Adobe After Effects, Adobe Lightroom. Um, but uh, I, a lot of people get kind of hung up on having the, the quote-unquote best equipment. But at the end of the day, you know, there was a, there was a film that came out, what was it, a year, year and a half ago that was shot entirely on an iPhone. So it's, it depends on, you know, if your story is, is powerful and the, the means in which you're telling it is, is strong, then the, the equipment is secondary, you know, like it, it all starts within yourself. So know the story you want to tell and then everything else will kind of fall into place from there and then figure out how to 
make make the most of it you know because i was you know even when i was make shooting usher's documentary i was using a, a camera that costs like twenty five hundred dollars which is expensive in the relative price range to other people but then compared to what um you know hollywood films are made with it's it's a drop in the water so it's just it, it it's everything is relative in this in this life you know just being able to take what um what you what you have um, which is a vision and then just move from there then everything else will kind of fall into place and then you'll end up being at the point where you have an abundance of resources at your disposal because you are choosing to move from a place of love and your vision because trust me the universe will reward you if you're operating from a place of love that's the way the world works <laughs> is we're meant to all live in harmony together and regardless of what society may tell you we are not different. We are not competitive. We are not meant to have stresses. We're meant to just all be happy and be one and be in unity. And the more you continue to live out of that space, you'll find that these kind of d divine moments will happen. You'll be like, oh, that's a coincidence. No, it's not a coincidence. It's, it's you living out of a, a positive heart space. And then you gravitate towards other situations and other people that um, are operating at the same frequency you are. So just staying, staying positive day, day in, day out. There's always a reason to be positive, regardless of what in, internal perceptions you may have. There are, is always something to be positive about. Hold, hold on to that positive and continue to move from that positive space. And then everything else will fall into place from there. I loved uh, before that you mentioned you would look out in the sky or, you know, out over, over a scene and you'd imagine, you know, dragons or <laughs> things yeah. flying in the air. I love that because I, I read a quote recently that said, uh, your level of achievement is limited by your lack of imagination. Are we awake or are we dreaming right now? What is the actual difference? <laughs> you know, if whatever whatever's happening within this brain of ours with this in this imagination is what is then being projected and being manifested within our day-to-day -day life. So whatever we dream is a reality, as long as you believe in it, that all that is, is, is a, it's a belief system. And then if everyone believes in one thing together, isn't that reality? So just, you know, not don't, there's no such thing as fear. Fear, fear is the ego's um, notion of not existing, but we are not our ego. We have developed in individual concepts and idealisms of what we are based on society, based on us being born and being like, you're a man, you're a woman. What? You think our souls have any idea what a man and a woman is? And then all of a sudden you like this and you like this. Guys like blue, girls like pink. Huh? The mirrors came into existence in like the 1800s. We, we're not supposed to have a notion of what we look like. We're all the same. The world is infinite. Literally, there's anything, any, anything you can fathom can happen, but it starts within yourself. If one person believes that it could be different, then it could be different and it will be different. And then everyone else can believe it can be different and it will be different. And then it continues to move that way. The Internet didn't exist 100 years ago, you know, and that was a radical notion. And it, it continues to change. It continues to shift. So as long as we just step one, believe in your dreams, believe in yourself and believe that what you're doing is coming from a place of love, then your outward uh, world will then manifest accordingly. Yeah, I think an important thing to know is that your future isn't ahead of you, it's within you, right? It was instilled now, within us from birth. Like we all have a purpose here on this planet. And I think a lot of people are kind of looking to the future going, well, how do I get there? I remember uh, reading a quote recently that says that if you clean out a corner of your mind, then creativity will instantly fill it. And I think that in our life, as I see with you, you're, you're creating, you're out there, you're moving in the world, you're, you've got the habits in play where you're spending time to yourself and, and really you know, connecting with other people as well to really get into a space of creativity. I think a lot of us are distracted. So how do you stay in a creative space? By just being in the now. How often do we spend, most of us, on a day-to-day -day basis sitting not doing anything quiet within our own mind and not thinking about thinking. Just allow yourself to be, allow yourself to breathe, focus just on your breathing, allow yourself to know what that feels like, allow yourself to feel yourself in your body, to move yourself from your mind, body, into your heart, into your physical being and just be quiet. And then I don't ever have to think about being creative because like that quote said, 
all it means is once you remove the clutter, we are naturally all creative. Everything that we're seeing, we're manifesting at the same time. There's a reason why we're seeing something at this exact moment is because we are manifesting it. That's what is supposed to be happening at this exact moment. So as long as you can free yourself up from what do I need to do? What should I be doing? Why am I doing this? What did I need to just be? Just be quiet. Just allow yourself to just be. And all of a sudden, everything just comes effortlessly and, and seamlessly to you. I don't ever try to create. I'm just, it's just, it's our default situation is we're always just creating you know as soon as we allow ourselves to be fully quiet that's what dreaming is that's what going to sleep is but you can be dreaming while you're awake we are dreaming while we're awake there's no difference when we open our eyes and now we're in a conscious reality we're still have that subconscious there just allow yourself to just access that always or be that always we all have amazing dreams we all have seen awesome movies we are all that just allow yourself to be all that. And that just, it, for a lot of people, it takes practice. Allow yourself, we've been programmed and we've allowed ourselves to be kind of um, s- set into this kind of formulaic system of how uh, living and society works. But, you know, meditating is a good place to start or yoga or reading or writing or just allow the, the place where you no longer are thinking about thinking. And then all of a sudden, an in, in infinite um, creativity will pour through you like a like a like a beautiful n- nozzle with water running flu- uh, through you because that's all we really are. And then just keep keep moving from there because that's what actually feels good. We know what feels good. Just keep operating from a place that feels good, and then everything else is like, wow, this is really easy. Yeah, it's it's almost like we need to get out of our own way so that we can let our soul express. Because that's really creativity, yeah. right? Is letting your soul express. And uh, getting good at that because everything's everything's uh, learned, isn't it? And, and if you keep practicing it over and over, you get better and better at it. So, Jordan, what do you see a lot of people doing uh, that's wrong when it comes to content creation? Like just some simple things that people keep repeating where it's not getting them the results that they are uh, uh, desiring. I think step one is consuming too much you know why do we go on to social media if you're going to social media to unplug from your day-to-day life then that's you're you're doing life wrong because why would you need to unplug from your day-to-day life um if you're going on to consume something that's going to inspire you or make you look at the world differently in a positive way that's not going to make you feel negative about yourself or feel or compare yourself or judge yourself we're not supposed to be judging ourselves we're all the same so um I, I'm going to be honest, I don't consume social media anymore. I, I go on, I share, and then I, I get off. And, um, you know, even my mom will send me articles about so-and-so, and I'm like, that's awesome. But I, I, I just, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm more, I, I'm so in love with what's happening within my own mind and my own life that I'm going to continue to operate from that space. And then the people that I do interact with naturally and organically, then it's meant to be so. Um, And the only thing I would say specifically is what I touched on earlier is don't share things that you think are just going to get likes and clicks because you're just teaching bad habits to people. Don't post an overly sexual picture because you think that's what's going to get likes. But unless you're preaching to people, it's okay for you to be beautiful no matter what shape or size. Or We're not supposed to look and be like, I wish I looked like that. No, you are that. We're all the same. There's no definition of beauty. You know, beauty is literally in the eye of the beholder. More importantly, it's in your own consciousness. If you think you're beautiful, you're beautiful. And trust me, you are beautiful because why wouldn't you be beautiful? Um, And then don't, again, I just, it's a shame that some, that, you know, I think these um, giant platforms have a responsibility as well too. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, to not cater their algorithm to, you know, show the videos and content that they think people want to see because they also have a responsibility. It's okay to allow people to organically see this, the stuff that um, motivates them. And if it's, you know, it, uh, healthy cooking recipes or if it's um, uh, words of wisdom and words of affirmation to make you feel beautiful, that should get the equal amount of exposure as someone who is standing on top of an expensive car and a fa- in a wearing um, expensive clothes in, in an exotic place. That's how how does that hold any more substance? You know, now we're 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 teaching we're teaching people the wrong idealism. I, the the right thing is it's a you know it's equally as beautiful to be you know naked in the middle of nature, 
uh, as long as it, you know, it's making you feel beautiful and, and happy, you know? So, um, yeah, I just think, um, you do operate from a place that feels real <laughs> and that feels substantive because at the end of the day, we all are going to, within this human form that we're living in right now, it's going to expire at a certain point. Just live every day fully appreciating it and know what feels good. And we, you know, at the end, we all know that feeling, you know, at the end of the day when every, everything kind of like quiets down and, and the kind of um, chaos of everyday life subsides and you allow yourself just to be quiet within your own mind. And, you know, that's, that's what you have. That's what you're living with. That's you. So just always be comfortable within that. And then everything else, once you're comfortable alone in your own mind and feel beautiful and you don't judge yourself and you aren't anxious and you, you, you're happy and you find this happy place within yourself, then the world is a much simpler, more beautiful place. Um, so, yeah, social media has a, a responsibility for that. And that's why I'm happy to be talking about things like this and also being able to share th- positive messages that have to do with that as well. So people can look and see and hopefully feel and say, wow, I can just be happy by, within myself or I have a beautiful imagination. I'd like to, the, the best messages I receive are, you, thank you, Jordan. I, I've now, I, I want to live my life being a photographer because I love taking photos and I want to sh- like sh- travel the world and see how beautiful it is. It's like, that's amazing. That's what, that's not what I'm necessarily pre- preaching, but whatever resonates to each person. If you want to go be a writer, be a writer. If you want to, you know, live on a farm and, help uh, animals be treated better, do that. Whatever you is your true calling and your true nature, whatever makes you feel happy and light, then just go from that. Because trust me, having millions of dollars does not make you happy. No matter what someone will tell you otherwise, it will not make you happy. And you, Matt Damon even had a beautiful quote when he won the Oscar for Good Will Hunting at a very young age. He said he went home and he cried. And he cried because he realized he was so thankful that he achieved this accolade at such a young age because he realized it didn't make him happy. And he, and, he, and he thought to himself, what if I went my whole life, if I went to 80 something years old and I won this and realized, wow, I spent my whole life aiming for something that doesn't fill me up. So just being cognizant of that, knowing that no thing will make you happy, only you can make you happy. So start with that and then everything else will work its way out. Beautiful, Jordan. Jordan, where can we find more of your content online? Um, I am I am on all platforms at Taylor Cut Films and uh, redoing my website as well, TaylorCutFilms.com, where I'll be hosting um, the film that I will be creating this year, and then I'm writing a book that will be on there as well. So, um, yeah, you can either any social media platform and then my website as well. Beautiful. Jordan, what's the name of the book? Have you come up with a name yet or are you waiting till you finish the book? Yeah, uh, it, working title right now, but just know what the ch- what the chapter is and um, it's going to be interactive as well. So it'll, it'll have some of these thought processes and these words of wisdom that, um, you know, I've I've been saying within within this podcast and also things that I've learned through studying psychology and through my journey of meditating and then uh, a lot of um, visuals as well, some artwork that corresponds with that, and uh, it'll be interactive. It'll have um, uh, an area towards the later half of the book where you can write in um, you know, just words of affirmation for yourself, and then also little things you could do every day, like what did you dream about last night? What are you looking forward to tomorrow? What makes you feel beautiful? Um, just little practices that people can do um, on a day to day basis that can kind of hopefully retrain and reprogram you to start thinking more positively and not be um, find the default mode of having to put on Netflix or, um, you know, consume social media or things that honestly don't make you feel good. So just little, little tricks that can help you um, stay and remain in the now and stay positive. So, yes, I love that. I've got a saying, don't get ruled by the robots. (laughs) Yeah. 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 It's, it's about being a creator rather than a consumer. And uh, I remember a guy by the name of uh, Kel Newport. He he wrote quite a few books. He's an incredible guy. He unplugs from social media. I don't even think he has a social media. And Mm. he is just incredibly successful in what he does because he doesn't plug in social media. He just creates. And he said that we live in an age now, and, and this is actually becoming more and more true as the years move on. But he said, those that can pay attention and stay focused longer are going to come out on top and be the winners 
in this day and age. And that's that whole distraction yeah. thing we're talking about. Like if you're in your space, creating and creating the, the space, making the space for you to, to be in that where you're constantly inspired, I think really that's the key. And, and it sounds like you've been doing this for quite a while now, which is why you have that high level of success. So if there's anything we could drive home in this uh, interview, uh, I'd really just love to recap, if you don't mind. I, I think really turning the dreams into reality is really based off knowing that uh, your soul is is really there to express. And, and guys, if you're listening, you need to create the space for you to be able to let your soul express. Jordan has really committed for many years to his art and his craft and he he already believes within himself that he has everything in him and around him to make it possible so if you're listening to this don't sit around waiting for that next secret or that next hack or that next like looking for at someone else for inspiration you already have everything within you so jordan i look mate i really appreciate you jumping on your content is wild. I absolutely love it. Uh, I, you know, I'm working on a few video projects for my book later in the year, so I might have to contact you later in the year. Uh, I, I, do you do indie independent projects, or how can anybody reach out to you for some film projects right now? Um, my email is jordan at taylorcutfilms.com, but I'm kind of dedicating 2018 on this, this the book, the website, and, and my film are kind of going to be three main endeavors um i really want to be able to um create something that uh i'm putting my whole heart and soul into so that's going to be the focus for 2018 and uh see see where it leads me but yeah just living in the place of now and realizing that all we have is this present moment so operate from that place and then life uh just becomes a blessing day in and day out because you're not thinking future forward and you're not living in the past so Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, thank you for those those uh, amazingly kind words. I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Yeah, I feel you on the uh, the book writing process. I'm actually writing a book right now and I know what it's like. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you got to sit down and commit. Hey, that's the thing. You know, some days you hit the brick wall and some days you're just in flow and you need to make sure that you're in the space to, to create. Uh, so well done. That's a, it's not an easy thing to write a book. So I, I wish you, uh, you know, Godspeed and, and best of luck with that and lots Appreciate of fun it. as well you too awesome you too. so jordan we always end the interview with this last question okay and this mm-hmm. last question is if you were to deliver your last 30 second speech to the world what would that last 30 seconds sound like hmm. i'd probably tell everyone just to listen to their heartbeat and take deep breaths in and realize that this moment that we have right now is all that truly exists so allow it to be in a state of bliss 